taste. It's low in fat. It's a very good idea to eat light. But it's the taste, it's the taste that brings us. Whirlpool announces two. This is CBS. Honey, I'm home. You're just in time. Uh -oh. For my chicken larage. Oh. <laughs> and my biscuits. Ah. And my. Ring around the collar. Ring around the collar. For a tough stain like this, you need whisk. But I use. Raisin but... powders aren't good enough. Whisk does a better job. And when whisk gets out, ring around the collar. The but... whole wash is clean. No more leaving you alone. Yeah, no more. Ring around the collar. Whisk gets ring around the collar and your whole wash clean. Let's compare Ford Ranger and Chevy S10 to Toyota, the number one selling import truck in America. Toyota has the biggest payload and the most powerful engine. And the sticker price for this totally redesigned 1984 Toyota is the same as it was all the way back in 1982. No wonder Toyota knocks the competition flat. See your Toyota dealer and ask yourself. What will you do with all the money you save? On Barney Miller Friday, an arsonist heats up the 12th precinct. Family Feud will not be seen tonight in order that we might bring you the following Action News special report. Family Feud will return Monday. The Colts could move tomorrow if they wanted to. They could have moved six months ago, a year ago. When Al Davis moved, we could have moved. We are not moving. We didn't move. This is an Action News special report. The Colts, brought to you in part by your Baltimore area Toyota dealers who ask, what will you do with all the money you save? Good evening once again, everyone. I'm Dave Durian. And I'm Chris Thomas. For tonight at least, Baltimore still has a football team. However, a deal to move the Colts to Indianapolis could be finalized at any time. Will the sounds of Go Blue soon be just memories, or is there some seeming miracle, some way that the city of Baltimore can satisfy Robert Ursay and keep the Colts? In the next half hour, we'll try to answer those questions and put this past week into perspective. It started Monday with Indianapolis Mayor Hudnut sounding very much like a man whose city was about to get an NFL franchise. I can very well understand how the people of Baltimore feel. We were on the verge of losing an NBA franchise last year. We worked awfully hard to keep it, and we did. And uh, by the same token, I'm the mayor of Indianapolis and have to be as active and aggressive as I can for our constituency. Two days later, and Baltimore's mayor, William Donald Schaefer, was sounding very much like a coach losing badly just waiting for the gun. I feel sad. I think he's making a mistake in taking the team out. But uh, I, don't, I don't have any, I don't know yet. The full impact of how it feels uh, hasn't hit me yet. The harsh reality was also starting to hit the Colt faithful. Some of them became offensive. Others could only plead. I think that Ursa has made up his mind that he's leaving, and that's it. And uh, I think we could offer him the world at this point, and it's just going to go. Give us a chance. Please do not take our Baltimore Colts away from us. But the bankers and the politicians in Indianapolis continue doing their work. Whether they're succeeding is not known here. A blanket of secrecy has been thrown over their meetings. Reporters are not allowed to sit in on the sessions and obviously can't ask many questions. A lot of questions, and Chris, the one person with most of them, presumably, is Robert Ursay. Yes, and unfortunately, Dave, Mr. Ursay is not talking, and neither is his chief legal counsel, Michael Chernoff. Uh, all of them are out in Chicago, at least we assume uh, they are, as is Vince Bagley. And uh, we'd like to talk to Vince, who's standing by, he attended the National Football League owners meeting today. Vince? Yes, it did. Uh, watched it from the lobby, Chris, and I want to tell you, we looked at a door staring us in the face all afternoon, all morning and all afternoon. Bob Ursay was at the meeting this morning, uh, went out the back way. The commissioner of the National Football League, Pete Rosell, came out, gave us a briefing, and among other things said that the deal was not closed at all, that Baltimore still had a chance because Mayor Schaefer uh, was continuing to try to do things to get the thing accomplished. He did say, and this was the one that, thing that astounded us among many this week, that Bob Ursay is still shopping his team around. We couldn't believe that Memphis and Phoenix and Jacksonville and even New York would still be involved in the picture. It would seem to us that all of the effort 
and all of the energies of the Colt uh, magnet are being put in the hands of the Indianapolis people to try to work out a deal there. So I, I can't believe that that actually was taking place, but that Indianapolis is at this time certainly the only place that uh, has a chance to take our Colts away. Vince, my reaction to that story was uh, to be astounded as well. The idea yeah. that Mr. Ursay would even suggest publicly that he's still shopping his team around, given the sensitivity of the people in Indianapolis, right. knowing that Mr. Ursay's track record was extremely erratic. And I just wonder at this point, after that statement today, and, and what may be a breakdown in the negotiations, what their attitude really is there. I would think they'd be disappointed. Well, I would certainly think so. Mayor Hudnut has been conservative in his view. Mayor William Hudnut, who used to be a Colt fan when he lived in the Annapolis area. Uh, he's a fellow who was conservative in his view. As a matter of fact, the sports writers, a lot of the people in the city of Indianapolis, with whom we talked because we were there all week, uh, felt we are not really sure about this because we've seen what Bob Ursay has done in uh, hanging the football over other towns and then pulling it away when you reach for it. So. Uh, they have to be disappointed. And maybe uh, our, we're a little bit enthused that uh, we're buying some time. They have to be really put out that uh, they don't have the team right now. Absolutely. The man has a tremendous sleight of hand. Vince will be rejoining you in just a little while. Stand by and stay okay. comfortable. Dave? While Robert Ursay continues to listen to offers from Indianapolis, Baltimore may come up with its own new plan to keep the Colts. Reportedly, these are the conditions that Baltimore must meet. One o'clock starting times for Sunday games, a low interest loan for Bob Ursay, some unnamed stadium improvements, and a buyer or buyers for a minority interest in the team. Mayor Schaefer has never really given up. Rudy Miller is standing by with him live right now. Rudy, is the uh, mayor in better spirits tonight than he seemed to be earlier in the week? Let me ask the mayor I that. I think we should ask <laughs> the mayor that. I uh, wasn't really in bad spirits. Uh, you know, when you... Uh, you don't know exactly where you stand, you, and you keep asking, you're asked the same question, what's new, what's new, and you're not able to answer. I listened to what you said the terms were, the one o'clock, we were down in Naples today, and I think we can get that. The loan, we're working on the loan, we're working with the governor and uh, some groups to try to figure out if we can get a loan. Stadium improvements, we really haven't talked about that, uh, exactly what, he, what Mr. Ursay wants. He talked about additional seats, and I think we could do that. Uh, selling, buying 49%, that's some problems because the people who want to buy 49% really want an option to be able to buy the other 2%, and Mr. Lee, Mr. Ursay has said continually, I will not sell more than 49%. Uh, so and do you have any live wires for the 49% ownership? Uh, yes, with, uh, with a stipulation, uh, with an understanding that they most likely will not be able to buy that other 2%. Uh, In terms of the stadium renovation, we've talked about the $15 million, seven and a half for the Colts, seven and a half for, is he talking about over and above what has already been agreed no, on no, with that seven no. and a half million dollars? No, first of all, I've told Mr. Ursay, we can't build a new stadium, so don't ask me, and he knows that. I told him there's seven and a half millions for you, there's seven and a half uh, million for Mr. Williams if you want it. We can, we can put seven and a half million in where you want it, Mr. Williams. Uh, if they get in a, a total disagreement as to something, there's enough to be done in the stadium uh, that uh, we could spend the 15 million. Incidentally, I'm awful tired of people saying our stadium isn't a good stadium. Ours is a good stadium, and I, I, I have to bite my tongue when everybody, uh, when people say, well, they got such a great stadium there. Ours is not a bad stadium at all. And I cite that because we do, we're able to bring two million people there for the Orioles last year, and if the Colts stay here, you're going to see 50 to 55,000 people at each game. The one o'clock start time, you said you thought you would be able to take care of that. That's yeah. really been a stumbling block, however, for the last few years. They've wanted that for a long time, and we haven't been able to do it. What's different now that the Colts are, are yeah. about to leave town? Yeah. Uh, went to the legislature, and the legislature said it belongs to the city council, city council. Uh, if they would pass it, it'd have to go on referendum. I've, we've worked very closely with the neighborhoods, and uh, in our close operation, I think we're coming to a conclusion. I haven't given up. You are not surprised that Mr. Ursay is shopping this team around? No. Uh, Mr. Ursay, quite frankly, told me he was uh, in Indianapolis and other places. I know that. Uh, if people in Indianapolis didn't know it, uh, they, they, they're wrong because I think he is looking in other places. I want to say one thing about Mr. Mayor Hudnut, good man. He didn't try to come in and steal our team. He's a gentleman and a good man. Uh, but we haven't given up. Will I've talked with the governor Colts today. Here? Will we keep him? I honestly couldn't tell you. I just don't know. I'm going to Every time I call Mr. Ursi, I get right through to him. Reporters are not getting through to him, but I get through to him. Very congenial. 
uh, in a way, uh, said you weren't able to do this, weren't able to do that. But I said, now, you know, I'm not a miracle man. I can only do certain things. Can't build you a new stadium. I can't get you 15 million dollars tomorrow. I'll try again, see what I can do. And we have a. I, I know, with all of that, with all of that, I like the guy. I know it's, it sounds strange, but I do. Could we have worked on this plan earlier? It seems to the, to the public that it's an 11th and a half hour thing, even past the 11th hour. Could we have done this sooner? Rudy, it isn't, because I've talked about that 1 o'clock, and I've had objections to it. The churches have given me a very rough time out there. We've worked that out to where they'll be able to continue their parking. As far as the loan is concerned, I tried awfully hard for that loan. Even back in the time when there was a man, a great lawyer by the name of Eni, who helped me. I, I, we couldn't get that from the banks, and I understand that. The stadium improvements, they're there, we can do that. The 49% is something relatively new. Uh, I could get 51% tomorrow. Uh, I've got enough buyers that have called, uh, and I mean people that have the money could buy it tomorrow, no question about it. Mayor Schaefer, we thank you for taking your time and for all of the work you're doing on behalf of the city. And you look great. Thank you. <laughs> Back to you, gentlemen. Okay. Thanks very much. In a moment, a report from another city in waiting. And a look back at the promises of Robert Ursay. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Let's compare the 1984 Honda Accord and the 1984 front-wheel drive Toyota Camry. Camry has a bigger engine, an optional turbo diesel, and more room. And the Camry is sticker priced $400 less. That's why Camry uh, blows away the Honda Accord. So, see your Toyota dealer today and ask yourself... What will you do with all the money you save? New York, how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love the little things about you. I love your home cooking, honey. I love New York. I just love your silent pictures. I love the way you move. I love your foreign accent. I love the way you put on a show. There are more ways to love New York than there are lights on Broadway. For package tours and information, call toll-free 1-800-554-3600. New I love New York. You know why? Because it's open all night. New York. All night. I tell you, Providence IRA certificates pay an attractive rate. I'm not just talking about the next few months. I'm talking about the next four years. Now, isn't that really what you're looking for? An attractive interest rate on a long-term commitment? So when you see that Providence 48-month IRA certificates are paying rates like this, remember, they're talking about four years with no loopholes, no rate changes. No kidding. Provident Bank of Maryland. For you, for now, for the future. Welcome back. When it comes to the Colts, Baltimore is not the only city up in the air tonight. Just a few days ago, the people of Indianapolis were pretty sure that they were getting an NFL football team. For the story of what's going on in Indianapolis tonight, let's go live right now to Rich Hollinger. Rich? Hi, Dave. Well, to say the least, this week has been emotionally draining for Baltimoreans, particularly those who love the Colts and remember their many championship seasons. Well, in another respect, this week has not been an emotional picnic for the mayor of Indianapolis. How would you describe your emotions over the last week? Has it been kind of a roller coaster from frustration to euphoria? How, how would you characterize it? Well, your I wouldn't say euphoria, but it's been a roller coaster from optimism to pessimism. Uh, a week ago, I was uh, more excited than I had been through the middle part of this week, and now I'm in a state of limbo, suspended animation, not knowing how it's all going to work out. Yes, Dave, I'd like to comment for a second on the story itself. Now, I'm in news, not in sports. Let me tell you, this is a marvelous story. This is a wonderful story. It has suspense, it has intrigue, it has mystery, it has unusual personalities, it has all the elements. And for those of us here in Indianapolis, in a sense, it is like a big scavenger hunt all over town. In fact, the mayor of Indianapolis complimented the Baltimore reporters, saying they were far more aggressive in covering this story than the people over here. 
Dave, I have a question back for Chris Thomas uh, right. and for you. Uh, Baltimore, Baltimore Colts were not born overnight. They were not an expansion team. Once upon a time, if I'm not wrong, they were the Dallas Texans. And at one time, the shoe was on the other foot. Can the people in Baltimore appreciate that? Let's ask Chris Thomas. Uh, do the people here appreciate that? What, the irony? Well, the fact is that the team wasn't being supported in Dallas. And although I suppose you could argue that uh, the support hasn't been the greatest in Baltimore these last couple of years, I mean, I think the bottom line is, one, the product has been terrible, at least until we saw some improvement this past season. And the second factor, and probably the most important, is that the owner has uh, blatantly shopped his team around the country and at the same time asked the ta uh, fans to support him, which to me is a tremendous uh, um, discrepancy. So, yeah, I don't think the situ I don't think we're talking apples and oranges, basically, Richard. Well, Dave, you know, if I could jump in for a second, and Chris, one very knowledgeable source said to me today, if I lived in Baltimore, there is no way in the world at this point, if the Colts stayed in Baltimore, that, that I would buy a ticket to see the Colts. Rich, let me ask you one uh, in about five seconds. Do the people of uh, Indianapolis, the reporters there, know what kind of man Ursay is by now, know that, that he's unpredictable, that he is shopping around elsewhere? Oh, yes. No illusions here at all. They know all about Bob Ursay. They know about his news conference last January uh, at the airport. They know about his news conference last August at the Baltimore Colts training camp, where I believe he uh, misstated the names of his general manager and his coach. So there are no, no illusions here about Bob Ursay. Okay, Rich Hollander, thanks very much for that live report from Indianapolis tonight. Where are we here? How can Robert Ursay continue to shop around a pro football team? And and how does a city get a team in the first place? Dick Gelfman joins us now with, we hope, some answers. Well, Dick, I've got the first question. A lot of the fans have uh, been heard on the talk shows this week. Certainly, I've been inundated with hundreds of phone calls. And there's a prevailing theme to many of these calls. It is, let him go, meaning Mr. Ursay. Let him leave town. We'll get an expansion team. But, of course, National Football League Commissioner Pete Rozelle is on record as saying there will be no expansion until the idea of whether or not the National Football League can, can operate as the entity that it used to be is resolved. What is the legal question there? Well, you've got to look at the fact that the rules have totally changed. We're not dealing where we were a number of years ago. You know, for a while, the NFL had its own rules, its own game. It could do basically what it wanted. It could award a franchise. Well, good old Al Davis comes along and decides to move the uh, Oakland team. He says, I like Los Angeles better. So they're out of there. They take off to Los Angeles. You go in a kind of a move like that, and the NFL turns around and says, wait a minute, you're not moving the team. We've got our rules here. Well, they tested it in court. And when they tested it in court, what happened was the courts turned around and said, Mr. Davis is right. This is an antitrust case. This is a monopoly. You can't do this. You can't restrict the way teams can move. So what happened? The whole ball game, the whole set of rules that these people played by have now been changed. As a result of that, Mr. Roselle has rules he can no longer enforce. Why should he grant a franchise, for example, in a new city now, which I don't think is going to happen, but why should he grant a franchise if there's no stability, if that team can up and take a hike somewhere else? They're not going to do it. So what's happened? You've got NFL rules that aren't being enforced. What that means is Baltimore is not going to get a team. Yeah, and I think that's why it's important when we talk to the fans, or at least as I've tried to respond to them, is you cannot diso disassociate your emotional feelings about Mr. Ursay and the reality that if he leaves, the team goes with him. It is and, his the team. and the prospects, given the um, a number of uh, um, decisions in the courts, does not look very well, good right now. And in fact, we don't know what it's going to be till the Supreme Court issues the ultimate decision. And, and we're talking time. We're not yeah. talking about a team coming in in the next couple of years. Yeah. Long time. Okay, Dick, thank you. Thank you, Dick. When we come back, uh, a look at this whole episode from a player's perspective. Stay with us. But Unitas and company are not to be stopped. Unitas refuses to let go of the ball until he sees Barry break loose. Then he's right on target. And Baltimore moves all the way to the Giants 43. Let's compare the all-new 1984 Toyota Extra Cab to Dotson's King Cab. Toyota has a longer cargo bed, a wider cargo bed, a wider cab, and a longer wheelbase. And the sticker price? Toyota's extra cab is about $500 less. No wonder Toyota is pushing Datsun completely out of the picture. See your Toyota dealer. Ask yourself. What will you do with all the money you save?
Baltimore's Hot One. B104 is your Jackson Tour information station. Just listen to B104, the station that gives away more Michael Jackson albums than any other. And here's the thriller. You could fly in the B104 private party plane to see Michael and the Jacksons in concert. And you could win tickets to the Jacksons' local concert. Just tune in to Baltimore's Best. B104 means music. I'm Del Wade with Andrews Buyers. Scouring the market, searching for special buys from name brand manufacturers. Buying the finest quality clothing, always below original wholesale to pass tremendous savings to you. Executive tailored suits made to sell for much more, just $99.90. Famous maker sport coats, unbeatable value at $69.90. Hundreds of slacks, incredible, only $14.90. Shop Anders, you'll never have to pay full retail again. Looking good, feeling good, saving at Anders. Fitness. Food for fitness. Cottage cheese. Fitness. Food for fitness. Sour cream. Fitness. Food for fitness. Yogurt. Your body burns energy. It craves nutrient replenishment. Calcium for bones, potassium, protein for muscles, carbohydrates, minerals, vitamins, and more. Fitness. Cottage cheese, sour cream, yogurt. Foods for fitness. Some perspective now on this whole Colts situation. We haven't heard much of this week as uh, Chris Thomas is joined by Colts Hall of Famer Jim Parker. One of the real great players, Dave, no doubt about that. Jim Parker is uh, from the, uh, the glory years, the glory era of the Colts. This is a man who is revered in this city along with Johnny Unitas and uh, guys like Raymond Berry, guys like Artie Donovan. Though. I'm talking about the guys who not only played in Baltimore and became great heroes in this town, but elected to become part of and parcel of the community. They became part of the fabric of the community. And they're part of that era in which parents had kids and named their kids after the players. So they're about as emotional, I mean, talking about guys like Jim Parker and Unitas, as the fans are today, because you are talking about an emotional rapprochement between the fans and the team. You can't disassociate, you can disassociate your feelings from Mr. Ursay, but this is the Colts. And Jim, what I wanted to ask you is if you had a chance tonight to sit down with Bob Ursay one-on-one, given everything I just said and explaining your love and affection for not only the team but the city which you elected to live in, what is it you would say to him? Please don't leave. Stay here in Baltimore. But uh, on the other hand, Chris, you would have to... Uh, my first meeting with Robert Urshay, he um, got me confused with an active ball player. And I knew we were in trouble then. That was 10 years ago. He thought I was uh, Bubba Smith. <laughs> Since that time, um, um, he, I don't know, just, he's just uh, the type of person that can't be trusted. Just like now he said that he have not made a decision. And I don't, you know, it's just hard to believe. I just, I, if I was a player now, I would pack all my suitcases and just wait and hope that he wouldn't leave. Jim, is it more of a factor now that, I mean, sport, I mentioned this the other night, sports is so pervasive with money anymore. Money is a much more meaningful factor than it ever was in the days when you played. And let's face it, you guys played for peanuts even when they filled the stadium. Is it a matter of money, and is it a matter of what the mayor says, it's just a business and he's just a businessman? Well, it's a business and a businessman, but players, uh, if I was playing today and I played here in Baltimore for five years and had started a business here, I would prefer to finish here and I, you know, I just want to stay here. But uh, as a player, you look at it as a business, eight to five job. If they want to move, you have to go where they tell you to go because they are paying those uh, big salaries and they can right. afford to move. Jim Parker, thanks for coming in. Jim Parker is a former player and he's a fan, just as you are who are out there watching tonight. And he's just as upset, I guess, as all of us are. Dave? Oh, we'll have some final thoughts from uh, Vince, from Dave and myself when we come back in just a moment. Stay with us. compare the new Toyota Corolla to the new Nissan Sentra, let's start with last year's models. Now, for 1984, Corolla is totally new, completely restyled. But the Sentra looks the same. Even though the Corolla has more doors and more room, it's sticker priced $700 less. No wonder the Sentra turned green with envy. See your Toyota dealer and ask yourself... What will you do with all the money you save? The best things in life are the ones that need no dressing up. They're absolutely delicious just the way they are, plain. Like the smoked sausage made by Eckrich. Eckrich uses selected cuts of meat, 
so the taste needs no embellishment. You can put Eckridge smoked sausage into stews and casseroles, but when something is this delicious in its pure state, mmm, you don't have to. Eckridge smoked sausage. So good, you can eat it plain. I did it. I changed my husband. I'll say. <laughs> we both changed. To Promise spread with sunflower oil. Sunflower oil is visibly lighter than corn oil. And Promise has less fat than any corn oil margarine. And no cholesterol. We take care of each other with a low-fat, low-cholesterol diet that includes Promise. Mmm, good. Mmm, less fat. Nice change. Mm. Promise with sunflower oil. Great taste and less fat than any corn oil margarine. Bet you didn't deposit your paycheck. No. Put money into savings? No. Get a spending money. No. Pay the loaning utility bill? No. Busy people find mercantile cash flow tellers handle nearly all their banking 24 hours a day. All done. Done? Yep. I uh, also got our checking account balance. Cash flow banking's a breeze at Mercantile. For 30 years now, Sundays in Baltimore have meant the Baltimore Colts. Vince Bagley has been at Memorial Stadium for, I suspect, each and every one of those Sundays. Vince, uh, what has gone through your mind this week? Well, I'll tell you, Dave, when I, when I hear fellows like Jim Parker talk, I really get a lump in my throat because Jim Parker and Art DiCarlo and Alan Amici and Lenny Moore and Don McCauley and all of these guys have been my friends over all these years, and we don't want this thing to happen. I think of our friend Hearst Loudenslager. Everybody belovedly calls him Loudy. He's been a great fan for a long time. Had a heart attack a couple of weeks ago. We hope he's coming along. This guy be devastated if this happens. This will happen to so many of us in this town. We throw it through the week. We were a little bit optimistic when we came out here, and then our, the bottom kind of dropped out of the middle of the week. And uh, until, I, I think the mayor might still be the hero in the whole adventure. And for what he's done for this city, Mayor Schaefer, uh, maybe he deserves to be the hero. If he can pull this one out, we're going to be out of five. But anyway, uh, it's been a tough week, uh, a week of, of indecision on the part of the owner, and a week of really worrying about what's going to happen to our team. What about that void in our sports-loving lives? I speak for the thousands of Baltimoreans and people around our uh, television network and uh, who listen on the radio, too, who will miss the Colts. So the door is open. Pete Rosell, I saw him, oh, I guess an hour ago, just before he left, he says, I really like your mayor. He's a good guy. He came up to see us in New York a week or so ago. As long as he's working, the door is open. So don't give up. And he gave me a little wink. Now, he doesn't know anything because only Bob Ursay knows. But when the commissioner gives you a little wink and tells you to hang in there, I guess you have to heed that warning or that admonition. That maybe is a good final question for you. Does Bob Ursay, in fact, know right now what he wants to do? I don't know. I, I, I don't, I mean, people have asked me, I've asked people all week long. I don't know whether, people have said, he's afraid to move. He shopped all these other places. I'll say it, and I've said it again. If he doesn't take the Indianapolis deal, he'll never get a better deal. And as long as we can buy some time, pretty soon it's going to be July, you know, it'll be time to go to camp, then he can't move. So we just hope that time goes on and the mayor hangs in there and, uh, and, and Ursay makes up his mind to stay. Okay, Vince, thanks again. We'll talk to you at 11 o'clock tonight. Okay, Dave. Chris, final thoughts? Well, Dave, you know, I've always been a laissez-faire capitalist. I believe a man should be able to do the best business deal he can. But you begin to understand the restraints that an organization like the National Football League team places upon its membership, probably, if nothing else, to save the trauma and the emotional disaster that we've gone through at the idea that we may lose. And you see, it's Bob Ursay's franchise, but the fans say, our Colts. Mm -hmm. Although it's owned by a businessman, it's a public trust in the hands of the citizenry of not only the city but the state. So I understand the NFL's perspective now better than ever. Well, here's hoping it's a dull weekend uh, because that could be, mean Baltimore is still in it. Over the past week, it seems when there's been the least noise, there's probably been the most optimism. That's right. As Vince said, time is generally an ally, and with the mayor working as hard as he is, maybe we still have a shot. Let's hope so. Okay. Action News, of course, will stay on top of this story uh, over the weekend, quiet or not, and uh, we'll have the latest from Rich Hollander in Indianapolis, Vince Bagley in Chicago tonight at 11. For now, Chris Thomas and Dave Durian. Good night. Good night. Bagel of the Baltimore Colts from the Eagle Dime. Up back is McMillan. Trail back is uh, Dickey. The gift to Dickey down the middle, darting through over the five and down to about the four-yard line goes Dickey. Boy, what a nice controlled run. Anytime you're in that heavy traffic, maintain your balance. Keep your shoulders square to the line.
Nancy Nelson. And I'm Alan Frio. Stay tuned for news of the Extra Dimension. For reports on the Force, is it real, and telepathy with the dolphins. That's Extra Dimension next. I'm Alan Frio. And I'm Nancy Nelson. On our next edition of Extra Dimension, Friday the 13th. And the psychics predict the Super Bowl. I'm Alan Frio. And I'm Nancy Nelson. On our next edition of Extra Dimension, Friday the 13th, and the superstitions that go with it. I think it's a fun day. Probably the scariest day in mankind's history. I lost my first wife, so uh, it's, it's been no good for me, I tell you. And a look ahead to the Super Bowl. Who do the psychics say is going to win? That's on our next... Oh, what would you do if one triple left one triple top stain? I'd shout it out. What would you do if a triple-decker left a triple-tough stain? I'd shout it out. Shout it out because Shout's exclusive triple-powered jet saturates the stain, penetrates it, and shouts it out. What would you do if a triple-dip left a triple-tough stain?